In today's lesson, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the line renderer, and we're going to be using this to create our lasers. So to start off with, let's go ahead, we'll create an empty. Doesn't really matter where we place it, I just don't want it to be on top of my ship for now. And we're going to go ahead and add a line renderer to this, so we'll add a component, uh, type in line, there's the line renderer. And right off the bat, you're going to notice there's a lot of similarities to the trail renderer. So I'm going to go down and do a few things here. I'm going to turn off the shadows. To be quite honest, I'm not even sure if they actually do cast shadows. But they're going to be traveling so fast, it really doesn't matter. And I don't want my lasers projecting shadows. I want them projecting light. But anyway, receive shadows. Uh, no motion vectors. Material. Yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll make a material for it, but we'll do it after. Uh, we're not going to bother playing around with the, that. Uh, the big thing here to notice is positions. Now, a line renderer has two or more positions. Element one is the start position, and then you just keep going down through the elements till you get to the last position. And let's take a look at this right off the bat. So I'm just gonna leave my element zero. It's simply a vector three, the same as our position. I'm gonna leave it at vector 3.0 or 000. And let's go ahead and move element one a bit. Let's go 10 on the Z. And even though I have it over here, notice the line is drawn from the coordinates. So if I were to go ahead and move this to 10, notice how now it's starting to be drawn from over there. And likewise, you can shoot this in any direction you want. So here he is shooting it down. But you can't actually have more than one coordinates. I made an Etch-a-Sketch game with this a while back. And it turned out okay. So there we go. So as you can see, you can go ahead and make curves. Well, not necessarily curves. You'd have to have a lot of actual individual stops to make a nice smooth curve, but you can have bends in your line. But for today, we're making lasers. It goes from point one to point two. Can you even put just one position here? You can, hmm. but it's not gonna render anything. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and zero all these out just to start off. Uh, parameters, the exact same as we had for our trail renderer. And I am just gonna quickly shoot this out on Z10. Now this is the thickness that our laser is gonna be at. I don't want it to be tapered, but I don't want it to be this thick either. I want it to be quite a bit smaller. Let's try 0 0.1, 0 0.1. That might be too thin. To be quite honest, I'm never really gonna know until I actually apply a material and a texture to it but I know this is much closer. Uh, the colors aren't gonna work since we don't have a material we can play around with. I'm gonna use world space. I'll leave light probes or reflection probes off. Let's go make that material. I'm gonna call this player laser. Select that game object we made, which I should name laser. And drag and drop it into the materials. Make sure you put it in element zero. You don't wanna have more than one there if you do. Just go ahead, reduce it back down to one and drop it into element zero. And I'm going to rename this to laser. And now we have this gray beam here, which is fine. We can go ahead, color it up a bit. And <laughs> it helps if we go ahead and switch it to particles additive. There we go. So now we've got a reddish laser. Again, once we add a, an actual texture to the material, it'll look better. But I just want something on the screen for now. All right, so we got a laser done. I'm going to go ahead, put it back down to all zeros. I'm going to go ahead and create a script called, well, you guessed it, laser. And let's open that up. Since I'm going to be dealing with a line renderer, I know I want to make sure I have one. So that means we come up to the top. I'm gonna to use my require component with the autocomplete. And we use a type of line renderer. Now that we know we have one, we can come in and say line renderer LR. We'll grab it in our awake. LR is equal to get component. The component we want is our line renderer. And of course we know we have it because we have the required component. Great, so how are we gonna do this? Well, I want a function called fire laser. I'm gonna go ahead and make this public. We will not return anything. 
And one thing I want to think about here is how do I want the lasers to work? Do I want the lasers just to be responsible for the visual effects, basically just shooting the laser out, maybe tracking the position of the laser? Or do I want the actual ray casting everything else to happen in the laser? Now, I know I'm probably going to have ships with more than one laser on them. So I want to have as little calculation as possible in the lasers themselves and move that up to some sort of parent script that uh, maybe uh, targeting or something like that. And that handles uh, the ray casting to see if we need to fire lasers. And if we do, we'll send a position to it. And I think I like that idea better. So I'm going to go ahead and create a vector three as a parameter. And I'm just going to call this POS. Let's call it target POS. So the position, oh, let's not be lazy. Let's type the whole word out. So the position of the target. So to start off with, we can say lined renderer dot set position. And there's a couple here we can go with. We have the first one, which is set position, which takes in the index and a vector three position. And another one that takes in an array of positions. I'm going to use this first one that takes the index and the vector three position. Now take note that this index right here is referring to the index in positions over here. And remember element zero is always where we start. And since we're just drawing one straight line, element one will be where we end. So we'll jump back in and we'll do set position. And I'm going to use zero, the starting index. And I'm just going to say transform dot position. And I probably should cache that. Let's, let's get this done first. Then we can come back and change that simply because we're going to be firing quite often. There's no point in looking it up each time, but now we need to just tell it the end point. So we're going to say set position. The position we want to set is one, the end point. And I'm going to set that to target position. Then all I want to do is just flash the laser on and off. So let's say we had a target position that was 10 in front of us. The laser by default would be turned off. We'd set these values. Then just turn that laser on just for a quick second. Have it shoot and then turn it back off. So I'm going to come into my start and I want to turn that off. So LR dot enabled equals false. Then what I want to do is come down here after I've set the positions. LR dot enabled equals true. Now I do need a way to turn it back off after a certain amount of time. So I'm actually going to create a Boolean value for this. There's no need for it to be public or viewable in the inspector. You might want to go ahead and make it a serialized field, at least for now, just so you can play around with it in the inspector. But I don't see a need for it right yet. I'm going to call this can fire. Now on start, I have it set to false. You can go ahead and set it to false up here as well, if you really want. So I'm going to go ahead, create one more method, void, turn off laser. And there are other ways to do this, maybe with coroutines without creating a separate method for it. But again, I'm not sure if I want to have particle effects and there's probably some lighting that I'm going to want to turn off and on as I shoot the laser. So I'm just going to create a new method. And that way there, if I do decide to add particle effects and lighting, I can just add it right here into the one method where we turn everything on and off. So in here, I know I need to turn the line renderer off. And I want to call this at a certain set amount of time. And that's the duration I want the laser to show up on the screen. So again, one more variable. This one I will make public. Oh, sorry, not public, viewable in the inspector. Since we're dealing with time, I'm going to do a float. And it's the amount of time that you can actually see the laser. Laser on time. And I'll start that off. Maybe a half a second is too big, I know. But it's a starting point. And what I'm going to do is come down here and just use the invoke. I'm going to call turn off laser. And I'm going to call it in laser on time. Maybe I should call that laser off time. That would make more sense since that's when we're turning the laser off. So laser off time. There we go. Everything changed. And that should be good. Oh, except now we need to check in here. If can fire. So if we're allowed to, to shoot a laser out, we'll shoot it. And since we just shot, we want to go ahead and say can fire is equal to false. Then down here, when we turn the laser off, can fire is equal to true again. There we go. And I'm just actually going to test this in update. We can delete this after. And all I'm going to do is say fire laser. And I'm just going to take my transform dot forward. 
multiply it by, that is actually something we should think about with the laser. How far can it shoot? We probably should make a variable for that as well. And again, I'm just gonna make another serialized field as this is something I wanna change in the inspector. Since we're dealing with distance, I wanna float. And I'm just gonna call it max distance. And I'm gonna set that to, I want something fairly far, 300. That's probably not far enough, but it's a starting point, right? Max distance, there we go. And this one here, originally I was gonna put the, the, the ray cast in here as well, but like I said, we're gonna have multiple lasers. I don't need them doing all of their own ray casting for now. It may be something I wanna come back and change later on, but for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in a parent script. So let's save this off and let's go see if we have any errors. Does not appear to be. So I'm gonna make a prefab of this laser. And for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and move this laser out. Well, it's already out there. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it beside me. Let's start it up. We'll add it to the ship in a minute. And it should keep shooting. Uh, can laser, I guess we should have made that public. Or at the very least, attach the laser script. <laughs> ah, it's early in the morning. All right, so let's go ahead, we'll start it off. Hopefully everything's right. So there we go. We actually should have a, a reset timer as well. Because right now it's shooting that laser out every half a second. We probably should have it set to where, you know, maybe that laser can only be fired every second. But I think we'll actually do that later on. Because I'm, I'm not 100% sure how I want these lasers to behave. I do know I want them to fire. A half a second actually doesn't seem that bad, does it? I'm probably going to want more than 300 distance. But if you look at the flashes, a half a second seems pretty good. So let's go ahead and add this to my ship. So I'm gonna go ahead, open it up. Uh, just like before, I'm gonna create an empty under it, which I will call lasers. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drop the lasers under it. Uh, let's zero these out. And then go ahead and position them where you think you want your lasers. Uh, I could probably do three on here. I'm gonna put the first one right here, and I want it just in front of my ship. And I'm actually gonna rename this to main laser. I'll go ahead, duplicate it twice. Take this one, Ashley. Get rid of the second one, because it's just a mirrored as far as position goes. Bring it in, rotate it a bit, bring it over here. Roughly centered. Great, this will be left laser, and we'll duplicate that. And we'll make this the right laser, which of course, since my ship is symmetrical, I just have to move it. There we go. If we start this up, I should have three lasers firing. And there we go. We've played around with line renderers. Let's go ahead and get rid of that update. So it's not constantly firing. Then when we go ahead and create that parent script later, we have the method already set up and we know it can fire. So before I do, I wanna make sure I apply my ship. Come back in. Uh, I'm just gonna comment it out for now. And that's it. Uh, thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you liked the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>